possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Wow. It's over the bar. Hello and welcome to the RTGA podcast. Um, we are just over six weeks away from the start of the Ulster Championship. Cavan and, and Monaghan are playing on 31st of October and then uh, the big one from the, far, from the quarterfinals is Donegal and Tyrone on the 1st of November. But obviously things have taken a little bit of a turn in the province in the last few days. Donegal has obviously moved to phase three and um, there's a lot of restrictions in place there. And earlier in the week, the UK Prime Minister, uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson gave some kind of stark warnings about a situation in the UK as well, and uh, which, which obviously inspired some restrictions in Northern Ireland as well in the six counties. So it's an interesting time in this very long winding road. And I'm delighted to say we are joined by, um, as always, Rory O'Neill, um, Sunday Game Editor, and Aidan O'Rourke, Sunday Game Pundit, former RMA footballer, and uh, Queen's University Director of Sport. And... Um, Sorry, performance performance sport manager at Queen's University. That's why I looked away from the screen uh, camera for a moment there. I had to check Aidan's title. And Cara Kane from the Irish News. How are we all doing, lads? Good, Mikey. Good, Mikey. Thanks. Well, Mikey, yep. Good stuff, lads. Good stuff. Listen, it's um, it's been an interesting week, uh, Cara, in the in the life of a uh, Ulster GA journalist. Uh, there have been the rarely quiet weeks, but. Between the Donegal football final being called off, uh, the, the, the inter-county panel having to isolate after a positive test, uh, positive tests, and um, team being kicked out of the down, well, not kicked out, team having to give a, a walkover in the down senior football championship. With the, the, the sun is nearly set on club now, but we're, we're getting towards the time of county and things are not running smoothly, it's fair to say. No, I think, I think there was always the the possibility that it would go this way. Um, obviously, the indications early in this pandemic were that the winter team would, would possibly bring a second wave and it seems to be sort of heading down that direction. And, and so nobody, I don't think anybody would be massively surprised. And to be honest, probably the lack of, of hiccup almost throughout the club championships, you know, that incident in down was a rarity, whereas, you know, when you were going into it, you, you almost expected this to happen. And, and obviously, like, my own club was was one of the 10 clubs that shut down in Derry um, at the very, very start, you know, when there was an outbreak around us. And, and you know, people were being ultra, ultra cautious, but the football hadn't started at that stage. And you were thinking, you know, if this happens, you know, one one case around us shut down 10 clubs. Um, <laughs> and, and the next thing you're thinking, well, sure, if one case comes during the championship, sure, it's going to blow the whole thing out of the water. And as it turned out, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too badly affected, but we're getting signs that it just might be a wee bit more over the, over the coming weeks. And obviously, infection rates rising on in both sides of the border here. You know, I saw, saw this morning, we're, we're very high up around Derry and Saban again as well, very high infection rates. And obviously, they're looking at ways to sort of close off the border to to Donegal um, this weekend, uh, which, you know, I just meant to go away to Donegal for the weekend, which isn't great. So, <laughs> but um, there's, there's very little you can do other than, you know, take the advice and, and go on and, and just try and keep playing. I think they've done the right thing. You know, I was, wasn't sure at the start whether it was the right thing to go back. And um, I think trying to play and trying to be sensible and, you know, most people have been sensible and safe about it and, <clears throat> The sport itself doesn't seem to be doing any great harm, so it's just just trying to stay within the lines. Yeah, um, so it does it does seem to be well in the in the last week. Obviously, in the, today, Michal Martin is today being Friday. Uh, Michal Martin talked about exactly restricting movement between Derry Tyrone and and Donegal across the border, which is a which is a big issue and also like has you know reverberations away from you know, it, it, it politically and everything else, the, talking about doing something like that, even if it's for public health. It does all seem to be in the west of the province, but a Aidan, what, what is the situation? You're obviously living in Armagh and, and working in Belfast, or at least your job is in Belfast. I don't know whether you're working there or not, but in the, in the east of the province, is there as much nervousness or is this kind of seen as an issue on the other side of the province at the moment? No, I don't think you can... 
I don't think you can bring geography into it really. You know, um, I think everybody's experience at the moment is is that incidences and, and cases are rising. Um, I suppose I'm dealing with this on two fronts at the moment. Like a lot of people who who maybe volunteer around clubs or whatever, I'm involved in the, the COVID committee and uh, at my own club in, in Drum and Tea. And while we haven't had any direct positive cases, um, the incidence of people being in close contact and been asked to isolate, et cetera, that has kind of exploded over the last two, three weeks. Um, so staying on top of what the public health guidance is for all of that is obviously uh, a chore on itself that you don't really envisage taking on when you volunteer to be the on the 13 coach or whatever. Um, <laughs> so there's all of that. And then obviously from a university perspective, um, sport is slightly different from the rest of the, the campus in that uh, necessarily so students are close together to train and play and what have you. Um, so we're under a certain amount of pressure at the minute to make sure that all of the guidance is implemented and, and that the uh, public health advice is, is followed. And that is a that is a chore in a university setting because 18 to 22, three-year-olds tend to do their own tend to do their own thing and uh, rules and regulations are secondary. And uh, as you know, people that age kind of think they're bulletproof anyway. Um, but again, incidents have exploded we're in a kind of a different situation than most universities at the minute in that teaching is on campus. So the students are back on campus. Um, and anybody who's connected to the Belfast third level uh, situation will, will understand that there have been incidents sort of creeping across the province because there's, a, a, there's been a, a first week back a term, house parties, the whole social element of things, which is normally the case in most universities that kind of has exploded onto the scene and people are going home at the weekends and at that side of things is pretty messy at the moment um, and the education piece around just what's at, uh, what's at risk uh, if people don't strictly follow guidance is, is, is a tough sell at the moment um, because these students are, are coming off a six month lockdown or essentially mm. and haven't seen anybody okay they're connected sort of digitally but uh Back to college, um, the usual fresher week, all that, that entails, that's been a, a real challenge um, for the last couple of weeks now. Yeah, and just for why are Queen's allowing students on campus if other universities are, are taking a different approach? <laughs> I might pass you, I might pass that upstairs, <laughs> Maggie. Um, you can't speak for the university though. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm allowed to give you all of the reasons, but <laughs> definitive answer. Probably yeah. the main one is financial, uh, in that yeah. we would have a, a large amount of um, international students compared to a lot of third level mm. institutions on the island, and international fees would play a big part of our business model. Um, and international students don't pay international student fees for remote learning. Um, yeah. So that's not the only reason, um, and, but it's certainly a factor. It's a, it's a reason. Um, <laughs> it's a factor. Rory, we've, we've, we've we kind of got a long way through this club championship. We've discussed it a lot, but, you know, there, you know, living with COVID and, you know, the restrictions and the lack of crowds and, like, you know, it's something we discuss most weeks, if not every week. Um, but for the most part, we kind of got through things unscathed. But, you know, for the Donegal football finals be postponed for a couple of weeks, that's that's a kind of that's a major thing. Like that that's the kind of that was seen as almost the worst case scenario. And obviously in your own county, Cork, there was a couple of quarterfinals called off. So it does seem that, as with wider society, that coronavirus kind of kind of creeped back in. And like there's been a little incident here, or a little incident there, and people say, oh yeah, well like we were bound to get one or two of those. But it's there's a constant stream of them now, and we're getting to the stage where you'd have to be nervous about the intercounty championship. There's no two ways about it. Well, you would have to be nervous to, for the Intercounty Championship if you're wedding yourself, um, like, it's, it's, you know, stringently to the current calendar as it's laid out. Um, I think if, if, if the powers that be are saying that the All-Ireland Football Final and the All-Ireland Hurling Final are going to happen on the 13th and the 19th of um, December, then there's probably going to be a few casualties along the way. There's the, I mean, if you look at what happened, for instance, in London on Tuesday, Monday night, Tuesday night, West Ham, 
So just before West Ham were due to play Hull in a League Cup game, the, the West Ham doctor walked into the West Ham dressing room and pulled the manager, Josh Cullen, and Issa Diop out of the dressing room to say, lads, you're all positive, you have to leave. Now, right being right, that game should not have gone ahead. And one would hope that if something similar happened in a GA context, that that's exactly what would happen, as in the game would just be either abandoned, postponed, cancelled, or whatever, refixed. And this is, this, is, this is something that, like, if that can happen in a, an environment whereby they're tested, as far as I'm aware, twice weekly, or possibly even more than that, then there's absolutely every chance that there will be a situation will arise with an inter-county team through the course of this championship, especially as cases become more prolif- pro- proliferant around the, around, the, um, around, around the country. But then you have to ask yourself the question, why are we wedding ourselves so so strictly to these dates? And okay, if for instance the championship was to drift out, take a couple of weeks off of Christmas and drift out into January, so what? You know, what's the big like like there's no point, like there's no point in us trying to finish it in some big mad rush so we can begin the leagues because they're just they're going to be just as problematic when they restart at whatever time they restart, you know, in March or April. So if you have to build in a week or two's grace because there's an issue with certain counties or a certain fixture, then I think there's no, there's nothing to say that you shouldn't allow yourself that little bit of wiggle room. I think the problem is, is when you sort of back yourself into a corner on, on the calendar and then you've nowhere to go when you're presented with a problem. Yeah. That to me doesn't make a huge amount of sense. Yeah. Uh, Cara, in your own paper today, we have the Ulster Council Secretary, Brian McAvoy, not really going into detail, but kind of, kind of going along with what Rory's saying there in, in that, you know, withdrawing a county from the Ulster Championship will be an absolute last resort and something they, they really don't want to do. Um, did he kind of elaborate in any way on, on how they will deal with it if we get a Donegal situation, you know, in November? Well, in fairness, it was Neil Locker and the, the three rather than myself, so yeah. uh, I'm not sure what, you know, the quotes that are there, I, I'm not aware of the conversation, but mm. look, I think the Ulster would be probably the same as anybody else. They're loath to upset the balance of the championship over it and would, you know, try to keep a team involved for as long as they could. But, you know, you look, it is, as Rory says, like it's very, very tight. There is no real wiggle room if the, the dates are going to stay as they are. There's, mm. there's very, very little you can do. Um, like Donegal, as it stands, if, if this had happened, the week of the throne game, they'd almost certainly have to be put out of the championship because of the dates for the, the semi-finals and the and the Ulster final and the All Ireland. Everything's knocked on, so you know, and you don't want that, you, you know. And especially, I suppose, you know, you look at Dublin and, and the the infection rates there and all the chat about lockdown there, like, and you know, for a championship that Dublin have to be put out of over over an outbreak, you know, it would, you know, it would. Just completely demean the the entire All Ireland, really. Like, and so we could almost agree with Rory that that there there should probably be some form of wiggle room allowed. And given that that the inter county window is pushing into a new inter county window um, in the turn of the year, where it's McKenna Cup and League and whatever it is, um, they should they should do their best to try and not put counties out of the championship. And if that means pushing your All Ireland final back into into January, into early February, whenever it has to be, just, you know, you sort of go along with it because, you know, there's nobody can plan anything at the minute. You know, you plan as best you can, but you can't expect that your plans will run smoothly. And so you just have to adapt. And like the National League is financially helpful for the GA and for counties as well. But, you know, who knows if we'll even be allowed spectators in at that stage of the year, either in, in early next year. So, you know, what's the point of, of hanging back for that and, and pushing, you know, pushing a championship and a window that you don't really need to do? Yeah. Um, obviously, complicating issues in Ulster, I suppose, is the, Aiden is the two jurisdictions. And again, harking back to your under 13 management uh, experience, I know that you, uh, you were a bit frustrated a few months ago about the situation around challenge matches. You know, you could go play one in, what was it? You could go play one over the border in Loud, but you couldn't play one in Armagh at the time, or vice versa. But 
you know, the, 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 this isn't going to go away. And obviously, Stormont are going to deal with things differently from how things are dealt with by the by the Irish government. And uh, that can be a real headache for under 13 Camogie, co- <laughs> under 13 football coaches, um, Ulster secretaries, inter-county managers, fans. It, it, there's just a lot there that can get confused, can get muddled and, you know, can just make things very difficult. I think there's a I think there's an appreciation at all sides that a lot of flexibility is going to be required here. Yeah. And as Rory says, if it goes into January, so be it. I, I don't think preseason competitions are scheduled for 2021. Yeah. I think they're they're gone. So there is a window there uh, when a natural fit, anyway, if required. There's a couple of things that are factors in this. Um, jurisdiction wise, obviously there 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 can be implications, but um, I think we. We might need to be looking at uh, midweek games, you know, as kind of fallback fixture dates. Um, I don't think you can set any of the fixtures beyond first round that uh, that uh, as set in stone, and maybe even the first round as we get closer. Um, practical things that uh, if someone has, if someone in a squad tests positive, this is certainly the the guidance in the north at the minute. Obviously, they have have to isolate for ten days. Um, but anybody who's deemed a close contact have to isolate for 14 days, irrespective of the if they pass a test or not. So, um, you know, if, if there's a test, if, if there's a positive in a camp here at the minute, uh, and some uh, of the of team of the teammates of that positive test are asked to self isolate, then it's two weeks before that next fixture can happen. For you know, um, so that that is a complication. I think. Administrators at the outset are going to have to, with the best will in the world, accept that this is going to happen. And if we want to keep teams in the in the competition, um, that it's going to have to be facilitated. I think there does have to be a limit to that also. Um, so you may get one of those dispensations potentially, but getting two and three just makes the 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 competition mm-hmm. untenable. I think at that stage. So um, there have been. I think you cited the Down Club Championship, Down Patrick. There have been examples where <coughs> clubs have just had to step aside and, and the championship rolls on. Um, it certainly, as Carr says, would devalue the championship if, if certainly one of the key contenders had to step out. Um, but ultimately, it's probably better that the competition runs and finishes um, as best as possible f- rather than we don't have a champion. A lot of these games are going to be no theaters area when we get yeah. to uh, kick off point or certainly yeah. uh, halfway yeah. through it. It's I think another and, and and what people don't realize, Mikey and 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 Car and and Aiden is it's very very tight. Like this is run off over eight weekends. So you what you have to remember there is take for each code so take two of those weekends out for the semi-finals in hurling and the semi-final or the finals in hurling. So it's actually only six weekends. So you're running off an championship that used to take five months, right? Five months it used to take in some cases. You're running it off in six weekends. It's extremely tight. There is no legal room here. And I think that's what people I don't think have grasped really just yet. Carrie, it's impossible to imagine the situation that Aidan's painted there not occurring in the in the championship at some point. You know, uh, players having to self isolate when one of their teammates tests positive or even has a test, because like it's happening in the Premier League. It happened to Zlatan Ibrahimovic uh, yesterday, and these are professional footballers operating in bubbles, which are carefully managed. Intercounty footballers, intercounty hurlers are amateurs they all have day jobs or they're going to queens or they're going to another university and it is you know it's it's illogical to think that we are not going to get positive tests in intercounty squads we already have them in Donegal absolutely like you know as you say the professional footballers and those boys are, are in bubbles in their way on their own and isolated on their own a lot of the time and Whereas like our fellas are working in society and and just living their normal lives as much as you can live a normal life at the minute like and it just, a lot of them are a lot of them are on the front line, car guards and teachers and nurses like they're on the front line. Espe- <laughs> especially teachers, you know, as you go yeah. into the county game now, so so many teachers and they're obviously back in their in their natural habitat at work a lot of the time. So it it is like it is just impossible, as you say, to imagine that we'll get a free run 
at a championship, and then it's how much wiggle. You know, the case in Donegal with the with the county final has been postponed until the seventh of October, the Wednesday night, and you know they were just fortunate that they had that time, um, that that wiggle room, because had it been, you know, had their initial dates been a fortnight down the line, and then having to postpone and having to run into the county window of games it would have been a bigger issue because then obviously there's a real pulling match between the two sides as to who, you know, who has the kill car and the Neve Connell players, who who owns them, if you like. And uh, and you, you look at the club final, you know, the way Donegal are going, they're, they're all Ireland contenders. Like, so you're looking at the club final being in January or February time away, removed from the club championship. Had that happened, you know, so another county football and Hurland don't have that time. They don't have that luxury. Um, it's it's going to be very very tight, and there's going to be, you know, the knock on. So say say Donegal and Tyrone had to be postponed. Well, the winners are duty play. The winners are Derry and Armagh. Is it fair on on Derry and Armagh to be sitting about for for two or three weeks waiting to see what happens? And Don, you know, there's all that. It's, it's the knock on effects that the, you sometimes don't realise, and it's you know they would need to have. You know, counties aware of what the contingencies are. I think, you know, yeah. let the counties know in advance of look. If this happens, this is where we'll go. This is what we'll do. But, this is the dates we'll move to. Yeah. Or, or if but, they can't, they can't. Well, one, 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 one problem though, I think with that, and I, I have huge amount of sympathy for anybody that's in positions of management or authority now. And we often hear this thing where the people say, "Should they're making it up as they go along?" And I say to myself, "Yeah, they probably are making it up as they." Go along and you will go well in case of global pandemic, you know, press button A. You know, so like I think a lot of the time they're making up because that's all they can, that's all anyone can do. <laughs> I think there will be, I think there will be a well taxable here. Yeah, First, absolutely. And then they're heading. Listen, game can't happen this week. The only possible time we can Wednesday week, the normal circumstances, GP, uh, play games during the week, you know player welfare or whatever yeah. one to 30 on that squad will be saying absolutely if the if the options are play the game or don't play the game it'll be whatever i have to do to play the game and i think that'll be across the board kind of yeah. boards players coaching administrators, absolutely and, and that'll help us uh, facilitate it it's not a silver bullet either um because there's no. gonna be a lot of hurdles to get across aiden um in your experience as an inter-county manager would it be possible to prepare a team uh, for intercounty championship, while not well, not having any of them be categorised as close contacts of each other, could you do everything outdoors? Could you like? I think we're allowing for close contact outdoors in a physical uh, like environment. I don't think that's at any point as a match being counted as close contact. Could could you feasibly? Could you um? Could you prepare a team while never meeting indoors and always maintaining a social distance? Well, you can, you can. None of it's ideal, but everybody's in the same boat, Mikey. So, you know, it's a level playing field from that perspective. There's a lot that you can do remotely now. I think, I think actually the lockdown period has been a real education for people involved with uh, sports teams uh, in that you don't always have to have a meeting three times a week. Uh, you don't have to keep them for an hour and a half after training. You know, this, this can be done. The technology is there to let analysis in feedback that can all be done uh, digitally now there's a time and a place where you know face to face is, is far more impactful but in the, in the situation we're in um, that's not absolutely necessary and I, th I think at this stage with six or seven months of practice I think inter county teams are going to have this pretty well down at this stage um, I think the, the bigger impact of, of all of this is I haven't had much time on the pitch they're not going to have a lot of time on the pitch before certainly National League games start and, uh, you know, conditioning is going to be what it's going to be. You know, teams that are spending time over the next six weeks working on their conditioning are wasting their time. You know, uh, players are going to come back after their club outings in whatever shape they're in. And that's going to be basically the baseline. The big impact is going to be uh, coaches can make an impact with, you know, playing patterns, game plan, you know, what you do when you have the ball, what you do when you don't have the ball. And the teams that get make the most ground with that are the teams that are going to, you know, make the most impact and probably it favours the teams that have been together the longest and have the most sort of muscle memory in terms of what they do. Um, there's a change of management in Dublin, so maybe maybe that impacts their 
uh, normal patterns or whatever, but there's probably enough residual. What do we do in these situations? Mm. Uh, there mm. with them. So, and maybe teams that have most experience winning together will probably get a bounce here at the start. Yeah, you'd have to think that you have to feel for those new managers like Support Joyce and uh, and the others. Uh, it's going to be a very tough <laughs> baptism of he fire. Had a, he had he was having a good league campaign though, yeah. Park Joyce, wasn't he? He so had he'd gotten off to a good start. I would, especially given the strength of Galway football and the way Cara Finn are blitzing teams again, and he's added a couple of players. I see Gary Sice is back on the mix at thirty six, yeah. which is fantastic to see, and um, you know like. Okay, they to a to me are definitely some a team to watch. Yeah. Mm. Rory, intercounty retirements sort of puzzle me a wee bit at the minute yeah. because it's a very short blast here for why, why give up now? Even even if you're can knock or you think you're not gonna be hundred percent, you can probably contribute something, you know, if you can get yourself yeah. at a certain level, you can contribute something coming mm. on the last ten minutes of a match could be Crucial, not to second guess anybody's motivations or whatever, but uh, you would have thought this window could be negotiated um, with work and personal circumstances to, to make it work for a couple of months. But um, I, 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 listen, to less than the commitment or, or, or the hours that are needed, uh, and they're back on that, most of them are back on that treadmill already. Um, but uh, it, it's going to be a different kind of environment for them, certainly. Um, mm. And it'll be interesting to see how newish managers you know first year managers are going to have a, a real challenge in, in trying to mold together a team to be ready uh just to go back to toaster just before we finish up Cahar, you, you're obviously speaking to plenty of players and, and managers in the course of your your, your work what, what's the general mood are people nervous are people kind of just plowing ahead keeping their heads down are they making contingency plans what what's the general feeling as far as you can see well, it's funny, you know, just on that topic of, of fellas retiring and not, like, and not everybody, you know, there's no there's no um, consensus as such, like, but you are talking to a lot of people who, and and you can see, you know, we've had a lot of interviews in the paper over the last few while with inter-county players saying, look, you know, I'd have been happy if we'd have just canned the season and, and started over again next year and, and go from there. And I think, you know, again, that's, that's obviously not everybody and, and the vast majority are there playing but I just think it's it's maybe whether the appetite is there for a winter championship um, you've you've sort of got used to playing a, a bit of dry ball now and a bit of free ball in the, in the summer with the club and, and you know the players again you're talking about, absolutely have loved the idea of not being pulled and dragged you know getting a window with their club where they got a good run at it and then going and playing county football or vice versa whichever it is but um the, it's, it's whether the, the appetite exists for for a winter championship on the whole. Uh, you know, the lack of spectators, the well, you know, I don't think many people have considered how cold Crow Park is going to be on the 19th of December. Like, it's not it's not a warm place at the best of times. And uh, and there's going to be nobody in it. So it, it's going to have a strange feeling about it. But um, look, there's a sense of absolutely play on, but it's it's very different. You know, you forget that None of these players have ever played in in knockout All Star Championship. You know it didn't exist when they were a lot of them were born. Never mind, uh, never mind playing football. So there's that element to it as well. And ordinarily, you know, Donny and Tyrone in a straight knockout All Star Championship might be just. You know, I mean, I've been talking about it all year, and yeah. and despite the circumstances, everybody's still looking forward to it. But uh, it would just be something else if if we were able to have a bit of a crowd at it. Yeah, it's a it's a fair point, Aidan. And we'll finish on this point that uh, uh, maybe the feelings of those the participants hasn't quite been taken into account here. A winter championship um, in front of no crowds with a lot of uncertainty. It mightn't actually be the most appealing thing in the world. Yeah, so I have to say that's not that hasn't been my experience talking to the county players. Like the, you know, there certainly was reservations uh, but as soon as a, a calendar came out and an opportunity to get their teeth into it they're it's been our man they're turning away and won here like um, you know you could play two National League games play your first championship game and it's over three weeks competition you know so that has added a bit of spice to it um, there's no holding back there's no I'll be ready for the back door you know it's full on from the start and uh, 
certainly the, the teams that are training at the minute are high intensity at this stage. You know, it's they've come from the club, which is was a great window for them. Everybody committed to it. It's great that they weren't under pressure. Um, but those that are now back with the county, a serious step up, and uh, it's a it's a it's been a really exciting prospect for most of them. This knockout side of things, even for teams that are in that tier below, they're thinking, Jesus, we just need to have a good day to take out a, a Donegal or a Tyrone or whatever, and we can win an Ulster Championship. And if you get to a, a last four, potentially, and have a good day, you're in an All-Ireland Final. You yeah. know, there's no back door. If Dublin Dublin get caught somewhere, they're not coming back at it. You know, so there's all of that in the mix that isn't always in the mix. You know, teams this time of year are thinking before Championship starts, is it more is it back more big teams will all be there even if they lose a game or and then the real championship starts well there's no more of that real championship starts when when first round comes and if you're beaten you're gone yeah one one small thing i would make an appeal though mikey and i'm sure look the two lads might have different views here one being an ex-manager of an inter-county team obviously and another working in the media i think we have to there has to be i would make an, a, a strong appeal to all county managers and team and county boards they're going to have to be a little bit more cooperative with media you have to bear in mind this is a championship like we've never had before the only place to see this championship will probably be through a little, a little screen, a little box in the corner of a, city, of a sitting room. They're going to have to give a little bit more. They're going to have to be a small bit more cooperative, a little, like they're going to have to allow us to get a little bit closer than they have done heretofore. And I know people would say, of course, he will say that, you know, producing the Sunday game and all of that. But at the same time, like there is a responsibility here on people that are shielding or, and, and, and cocooning, people that can't get to the games. You know, look, if you want to talk to these people directly, they're not going to be able to see you in the flesh. You know, come on. You know, in the spirit Andrea. of all of this, we're all in this together, apparently. You know, give us a small bit more leeway when it comes to access and that type of thing. I'd hope that that would be part of it. But you I, I would agree. Um, yeah. I, have, I have kids at home who are sport mad and... Um, what they can't tell you about Premier League players, players I never heard of from countries yeah. I never heard of, yeah. you know, their ratings and all the rest of it. Uh, can, Where they're uh, born, who they everything. played with before, you know, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Bring up interviews with them on YouTube in five seconds, you know, they can do all of that. And yeah, they know their own county's players reasonably well, you know, they could recognize them. Um, but, you know, top 10 stars beyond that. But do they know the, all of the best players in the county or in the country? They don't, and that's down to profile. And yeah. you know, it's not. It doesn't take away from a player to do an interview. It doesn't take away from a player to do something that engages with sort of our younger players who are coming through. You need role models. You need to be able to aspire to somebody else's journey. Um, and I think I think we've taken that away um, when the opportunity has been there. And it's if there's no logic to don't do interviews. There's no logic to stay away from the media. There's no logic to any of that. Um, and what we actually need is is to bring those players to the masses a wee bit more, and this could be this could open the door to all of that. Where the, the experience, if the experience is good this year, um, then hopefully managers will see will see yeah. the benefit of it. This is an open invitation to all intercounty footballers, hurlers, and their managers to come on the RPGA <laughs> podcast. Come on, man. come on, on. Say hello to everybody, um, lads. We will we will leave it at that. I'd like to say thanks, Cara, Aidan, and Rory. Um, we have the Cabin Football Final. Speaking of Ulster Football, Cabin Football Final on uh, RTE2 this Saturday evening. You're looking forward to it, Mikey. It should be a good one. I mean, to a bit of an upset. Cross, Crosser Law, I think is how they pronounce it, versus Kings Court. Stars and both weren't fit. Like, I mean, I think Crosser Law beat Castle Rahan in the semi final and they weren't expected to win. And um, Kings Court beat Cavan Gales and that was considered a big, big upset. So you have two unlikely teams in the final. A lot of excitement in Cavan ahead of it. And like we're really looking forward to going up there. So it should be a bit of crack. Just again, it's a pity. There's not going to be anybody there to see it. There'll be a few, but sure. Yeah. Yeah. But it should be good uh, fun. Seven at seven o'clock tomorrow night. And we have um we have Mickey, we have Mickey, uh, Mickey Graham and uh, Terry Hyland on the panel. So you've the current and former Cavan managers on board. Very good. And um obviously Saturday and Sunday sport will have reports from around the grounds. It's a busy weekend of county finals, and we will have the reports on the RT website and the RT news app uh don't forget the rt rugby and rt soccer podcasts are also available to download so we will leave it at that uh thank you very much and we'll see you again next week
Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it.